evening, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you coming in from around the United States and all around the world. Tonight, we're going to have a little bit of fun because I am going to show you how to make a box of cards that you can give as a gift. Now, I've done this box before a couple of different times it, through the years on Stamp TV and on my, my YouTube channel. But I think it's a good one to revisit because number one, we've got lots of new people who are joining us, you know, just recently in the last year and they may not have seen this. And number two, it just reminds you how easy it is to do this and what a great gift it is. And this, you don't have to limit this kind of gift to the holidays. Because anytime you go somewhere, an open house, a dinner at a friend's house, whenever you bring a housewarming gift, maybe it's a bottle of wine, maybe it's some candy, you can substitute this little box of cards as a housewarming gift or a thank you gift. And they're super easy to make. And you probably have lots of cards in your collection already that you're not sure what to do with that will fit right inside this box. Now tonight I thought that I would do it using some of our newer pattern papers and ephemera. And um, I think it's gonna be really fun. And the ephemera really helps because it makes really quick cards. So if you're a mass producer and you're thinking, oh, I've gotta make this for this person and that person and that person, this layout will help you make them super fast. So before we get started, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. How are you? I am doing well. We got Wisconsin uh, winter here in Wisconsin. Today. We do. Yeah, <laughs> there's a pretty good run for, uh, you know, pretty good run without snow, wouldn't you say? I would say I feel really <clears> lucky. <throat> I feel like winter is going to be much shorter this year just because it took all the way up to, what is it, November 15th? Well, it's an early snowstorm, but I feel like it's been a while. So it, it has been a while. I don't know. I don't know. We had a, must have had a good summer. Well, right? uh, you know, just a few days ago, it was 70. So I right. feel like we got away with, with uh, weather murder here. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people from all over. Hi, welcome everybody. Glad yeah. you're with us. Uh, see a lot of fun places um, that we uh, we have visited and a whole bunch we haven't. Yes, we need to get out there on the road. We should go do classes all over the country. Uh -oh. What do you think, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I like to put that out there every once in a while because <clears throat> I do miss teaching live and I do miss seeing you guys in person. So every once in a while I throw that idea out there and I don't know. We'll see. Maybe someday. You know, I bought this sweater. Somebody said they like the sweater. I bought this sweater and I was saving it to wear it on a live. And it is the biggest pain in the butt sweater. It is shedding everywhere. Do you guys ever have one of those sweaters that does that? It gets all over everything. That's this. So this will yep. be the last time you see it. <laughs> well, that's going to, you're going to work that into the card, right? <laughs> it's, I'm going to have to. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, Tom will be back in a little bit because he is uh, he's working, I think, over there on the word of the day. <laughs> and he's also going to have some music for you. Yes, Mary said she loves your word of the day. We can read all your comments. Tom checks them all as he, you know, as many as he can. Sometimes they're really flying. But um, and when I'm looking down and working, I can't always do it. But he always shouts out questions and things like that. All right, so the first thing I want to tell you about this box is that I have a instruction sheet that is in our Facebook group. Now, there's nowhere for me to upload this on our website or even on YouTube. In, on Facebook, in our group, there's a file section, and I have a bunch of different template sheets that you can download and refer to. Um, or print them out and make a book out of them. But I can't upload it anywhere else that I can see right now. So if you are apprehensive to come to Facebook, let me just tell you, um, you don't be afraid to come to Facebook. All you have to do is just name yourself something like Sally Stamper. You don't even have to use your real name, but use a name like, you know, um, uh, Jenny Creative, something like that. You don't have to friend anybody. You don't have to do any of that. Just come and join our group. The group is private. We screen everybody who joins. Every once in a while, somebody gets in that shouldn't, but we get rid of them right away. Um, 
and there are security questions that you're supposed to answer and stuff. Our group is very safe and it's so nice. For those of you that are watching from Facebook, you guys know how wonderful our members are. It's a really, really inspirational place. You'll see lots of card ideas um, and there's access to files and guides and all kinds of fun things. So don't be afraid if, you know, you don't have to go on Facebook as yourself. You can just make up a Facebook name and just come on over and join our group. It's called Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. And you'll find this sheet. So let's take a look at this sheet. So this is the sheet that um, I printed off today. And the way the sheet works is all the gray parts are the parts that are going to be left behind. All the yellow parts are the parts you're going to cut off, cut, cut off. And then there's some green lines and that is where you're just going to cut. Okay. When you get to Facebook, if you're looking for the guides, when you get to Facebook, um, look at the top of the screen and then going across the top, there are, there's discussion, members, guides, files, photos, all of that. You'll see it right at the top of our Facebook group. Okay. So we're going to make this today, and I thought it would be fun to make it out of craft because let me show you some of the pattern papers I want to use today. I want to use some of these patterns from the um, autumn. Let me find it here. I can show it to you. It's the Autumn Splendor pattern paper pack. I've totally destroyed mine, but it doesn't matter. The and I wanted to use like maybe this for my cards, this, and then it's got these, you know, simple texture patterns that are really nice. And so these cards, if you don't want to make flowers, you can just make these cards and maybe add some leaves and things that will make them a little more masculine. All right, Tom, can you pop up the name of the group? Just throw up the, thank you so much. That's the name of our Facebook group. So you can find us over there, but don't leave yet. We'll throw it up again at the end of the live and we'll make sure that you guys know what it is. And I will also link it in the description here on YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, I will link our group so you can go join it. All right. So I'm going to be using this and I am going to be using my score buddy. Now I'm actually going to use my score pal for this. I do have a score pal. I love this score pal because it's big and it's great for doing 3D projects. If you don't have a score pal and you just have the score buddy, you'll just have to kind of manipulate and finish your lines by flipping it around the other side. So, but if you have a big scoring board, it does make it easier to do all of these kinds of projects. The paper pad was in a kit, but it is available separately. So you can get it separately now. Okay. So as per the instructions, start with cardstock measuring eight and a quarter inches by 11 inches. Well, we know that our cardstock is eight and a half by 11. So all we have to do is trim off a quarter of an inch on that eight and a half inch side. And we will be, that's all you're going to waste right there. That's it. You're going to use everything else to make this, except the stuff that you're going to cut off at the end. But I don't count that because you actually need it there in order to make this. Okay, so then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay my cardstock out in the same position as this chart right here. Okay. Now I'm going to link the chart. I'll link the chart too. And um, I, I don't think I can put it on my blog. I can try, but I tried to do it before and I couldn't find a way to do it. All right. So Tom, if you could pull that banner down just so nobody misses anything here, that would be great. All right. So let's pull this back just a little bit. Now, the first score line I want to do is at, is at the three quarter of an inch mark. So I'm going to do a score line right at three and a quarter inches. Now, again, if you have the score buddy, you'll go down to about the six inch mark. And then you're going to have to turn it around to That's the three quarter inches. Three quarters. What did I say? Three and a quarter. Oh, I'm sorry. Three quarter inches right there. Three quarters of one inch. Okay, now I'm going all the way down to the bottom. Okay, now my next score line is going to be at the six and three quarters of an inch. 
over here, six and three quarters of an inch. There we go. Now my next line is going to be at the seven and a half inch mark. All right, there we go. Now this paper, like I said at the beginning, measures eight and a quarter inches by 11 inches. So we're making a box today that holds A2 cards and envelopes. And if you're just tuning in, just kind of watch. I know you missed some stuff, but it's going to be a lot easier for me to just keep going than to keep repeating. But I do have a sheet with all this information that is available in our Facebook group. Okay. And I will link it and pin it at the top of the Facebook group too. All right, so now that I've got my three score lines that I needed this way, I'm gonna turn my cardstock this way. I'm gonna turn my sheet this way too so that I can see what I need to do. So my first score line here is gonna be at the four and a half inch mark. Okay, four and a half inches. You can see, cause this is heavyweight cardstock, I score a couple of times. Then I'm going to go to five and a quarter inches. And remember, this video is going to live on YouTube too. So if you are trying to keep up or write it down, you can always go back and watch the replay and just write down the measurements yourself. Okay. Then we're going to go to the nine and three quarters of an inch mark. That's right here. those in there nice and deep. And then my final score line will be at 10 and a half inches. Okay. There we go. So now I have all my score lines. Can you see those score lines? You should be able to see them. Okay. Yes. Now, like I said, we are going to be trimming off all of the yellow areas. Okay. So that means that you're going to trim off first these two pieces right here down to the score lines. So let's flip that around and we'll do that. We're going to cut down here and then we're going to cut right across here. I'm not a straight cutter, but it'll be better than horrible. Okay, so that's my first cut. You can see it's not that much better than horrible, to be honest with you, but here we go. I'm going to try to trim it more and then make, make it a mess, and I'm going to leave it. Okay, so now I cut those two off. Now I'm also going to cut off just this little square right here. Do I need to zoom in more on that, Tom? Are they able to see that okay? Does that help? That's good. Okay, right there, this little square I'm going to cut off. Right there. But when I cut it off, I'm going to cut all the way down because this right here has a green line, which means to cut. So the green lines mean to cut. The yellow means to cut it off. All right, so I'm going to cut right down here all the way down but then I'm only gonna take the top square off. And here's just a little tip. Once you make one of these, don't fold it, just keep it as a template. Then it'll be super easy for you. You just have to kind of line it up to the one that you just scored and you'll just be able to know exactly where to cut out. Okay, so now we're leaving all of this here and we're gonna cut these three off right here. But we are going to cut down into that. So let me show you what I mean. We're cutting all the way down. And then we're cutting all the way down here. And we're gonna cut these last two off here. And then just the one here. Now, can you see where this is going? So now we kind of have flaps, right? Right, we're getting flaps. Okay, so now we've cut everything off that we need to cut off here. And then on this side, we only have a couple little things to do. 
we're going to cut this little rectangle off because that's yellow and everything yellow gets cut off. And then we need to turn these into flaps like we have up here. So that just means right along that score line, we're cutting there, we're cutting there, and we're cutting there. Now, we've got this box ready to go, okay? All right, now, if you see anything that looks like it could be trimmed down a little more, like you see too much of the score line, you can go ahead and get rid of that stuff. That's not a problem. The less score lines you see, the better. All right, now while it's still flat, if you have a tool that's called a corner rounder, like I have here, it's a great time to round the corners of the top of the box, which is up here. This is the top of the box. How many cards fit into this box? Well, that's a great question, Beth. If you make really um, thick cards with lots of embellishments, I would say four. If you make thin cards without lots of embellishments, probably at least six, maybe even eight. Okay. And it's also really good for storing photos. It's also a really great box to make a box of recipe cards for somebody. Like maybe you want to find something online where you can print your own recipe cards and then give them several blank ones and then maybe two or three of your favorite recipes. Okay. So now we're going to round the corners up here. And the way I like to round corners is I don't do it this way where I can't see what's happening underneath. I like to turn my corner rounder over. Let's zoom in a bit here. I like to turn my corner rounder over so I can see that it's in the right spot. So I'm moving that flap up and I'm going to slip that in there and I'm going to round that corner. All right. So now I have a rounded corner. Isn't that nice? This little corner rounder is by EK Success and they come in a two pack. Yes, you can make the box wider, but you're going to need a bigger piece of cardstock. You will not be able to use an eight and a half by 11. All you have to do is make these two parts wider. And I can't do that math off the top of my head. So I do, you know, this one is the biggest one that you can make with an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. All right, and I'm gonna round this corner. So now the top of my box will be all pretty. My corners will be rounded. I like to show everybody how to do things with regular card maker size cardstock. I'm not much of a scrapbooker. And even when I do scrapbook, I tend to do like six by six stuff. So, but if you have 12 by 12, you can look at this template and you can measure, and then you can add a half an inch onto each of these two strips right here, and the box will be huge. It'll be a whole inch wide. Right now, it's just a half an inch wide. Is that a half an inch? I don't know, I'm bad at numbers. Let me just check real quick. It's three quarters of an inch wide. So you could make it an inch, you could make it an inch and a half, but you just need bigger cardstock. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now, just a quick little lesson or a reminder for those of you that already know this, bear with us. When you score, you put score lines down into the cardstock, right? You dig those score lines down into the cardstock. When you fold, you want to fold away from those lines. You don't want to fold toward the line that you just scored. And the reason why is because when you score, you actually stretch the fibers. And so, that allows you to fold away without cracking. So that's why this is, we're looking at the inside, we're looking at the outside of the box right now. All of this is going to be folded in on itself. Okay, so before we do anything else, we are going to upholster the outside of this box. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut two black panels that measure four and a quarter, by five and three quarters. And I'll put all of this in the description, okay, of the video here on YouTube. And then we're gonna cut pattern paper four and an eighth by five and five eighths. That gives us a little shadow layer because I do not have a master layouts set 
for this box. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere these two together. This is going to make our little upholstered thing here. Okay. All right. And then that is going to go right into this panel here. <laughs> is Shelly doing hooga? <laughs> okay. So here we go. I'm popping that right in there. And you're able to see that it looks fairly straight because of the score lines going around the outside. So there we go. All right. That's our first one. Now, I'm going to put the other one together, but I'm not going to put it on right away because I'm actually going to upholster these little strips. And it's a lot more difficult to try to line this one up when you don't have the strip in there yet. When you have the strip in there, it's easier to line it all up. Okay, so let's get this on there. Okay, so this will probably end up being the back of the box, but we'll see. You can use glue for this too, if you prefer. I know I'm using a lot of tape. All right, and we'll get that. I'm not taping that down yet. All right, so now I've got two little strips. I've got a black strip that measures, let's see, the black strip measures five eighths by five and three quarters. And the pattern paper strip measures one half by five and five eighths. And again, don't panic if you're not writing all this down because I'm gonna fill out the description on YouTube and it will all be there a little bit later this evening. And I'm gonna put these into place. Okay, better than horrible. And now I'm gonna line this one up on this in this little strip area and it makes it easy because I can see the top here. Okay. And I'll tell you, the reason why I like to upholster this box as opposed to just stamping on it is because when you put all these layers of cardstock on it, the box feels more sturdy. It really makes it, it stiffens the whole thing up. Okay. So now I can put this one here because I already have the tape on the back because I was getting overzealous. Okay. And then we're going to put one more right over here. This is a great way too for you guys to use your pattern paper. And don't be afraid to do like one style on the front, one style on the back. It's okay if it's mix and match. These are great ways to store your photos too. If you're not a scrapbooker, you can make little boxes for each event, maybe a Christmas box, you know, go through and do the birthdays. It holds quite a few photos. All right, and that one's gonna go there. Okay, and again, I'm lining that up the best that I can. That looks fairly good. <laughs> fairly good is the same as better than horrible. <laughs> and all this pattern paper comes from the Autumn uh, Splendor paper pack. Okay. All right. So now we can start putting these folds in here. So I'm going to fold on all the lines just to get it going here. All my score lines that I put in. Here's my flaps. I want to get those flaps here, this flap, this flap, this, and then this is the tuck-in part. Okay. So now I'm going to start by, let's see here. I'm going to tip these two pieces in, these two bottom pieces. I'm going to tip those in. And then the first part that I'm going to tape is this part right here along the side. Okay. All right. Yeah, if you guys can just be a little patient with the file, I promise I will link it both on Facebook and I will link it on YouTube. I will link it everywhere that I can. Okay. So I promise. Promise, I promise, I promise. All right, so I'm gonna just cut a strip here. This is terrific tape. Um, 
This is a nice, strong tape, but if you don't have this, you can use score tape, you can use that tacky tape, but I'm putting it on there and then I'm taking a minute to really press down on it. So you can do that with your, um, with your score pal tool, just really put some pressure on it to make sure that it, it's really stuck to the cardstock there. So Barb wants to know if this is this box is the same size as the clear plastic one that we sold. You know? Oh, you know, I don't know if it's exactly the same, but it's really close. If it's not the same, it's really close. All right. And now I'm going to, again, put these bottom flaps in. Okay. Bottom flaps are in. And now I'm going to just line that up. Okay, there we go. Now, once that's lined up, I can kind of fold it there and really put some pressure on it. Okay. All right. So now there we go. Now we've got to do this bottom part. So I like to make all the raw edges on the same side. So there's a raw edge on the back here. So I'll put this raw edge on the back as well as opposed to doing it this way and having the raw edge on the front and then a raw edge on the back. So I'm going to apply some of this. Again, this is the Terrific Tape. And this is the quarter inch Terrific Tape. You could definitely put, um, let's see here. You could definitely put Wait a minute. Sorry about that. You could put more extra tape if you want. Yes, I love our terrific tape. Thank you guys so much. I We appreciate your support so much. Okay, and then I'm going to use my score tool again to just press that down and really make sure it's stuck. Okay, and then I'm just going to peer, peel off the liners and put that on there. Now, if you want, you can, you know, put something inside the box to press it down like a pen or something and just really, you know, just get your hand in there maybe. Okay. So there we go. There's our box. And then these two flaps go in like that. And then this just slips in there and you've got a cute little box. I love that. All right. So we are going to make a card. <laughs> I don't know how much time I have left, but I think it's close to 730. So I might be able to get several of these knocked out. Now, you can decorate this if you want. I think Happy Mail is a really cute stamp set for this because you could do like a little strip going across and then make a little circle that says Happy Mail or handmade card inside. Um, if you want to decorate it like that, you definitely can. I think it would be very cute, but it's also just very elegant the way it is. And people will know it's some stationery for them once they open the gift and they know it's there. So, okay. So let's just get on with the next step. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna make two cards at least right up front here. I'm gonna get my paper cutter. And again, I'm gonna use some craft card stock for my card bases. So I'm gonna cut these at four and a quarter inches. And I think a nice collection would be maybe two birthday cards, two thank you cards, a get well card, and maybe a thinking of you card that could be used for sympathy. Maybe put sympathy card in there, you know, whatever you want to put in. But um, just kind of think about the person you're making these for and figure out which type of greeting would be best. If you really want to step it up, you could buy them a little set of greetings and an acrylic block and a black ink pad. And then you could leave 
those areas on the card blanks so they could fill them in as they need them. And that would take this gift up even another notch. So I'm just scoring a couple of these cards. And then, but I'm going to finish my cards. I'm not going to leave them blank. And, you know, if you think it's a person that maybe doesn't necessarily send out those kinds of cards, you could just make them blank and beautiful without any greetings at all on them. Kind of like you would buy just a set of note cards, maybe for somebody that likes to write letters or, you know, things like that. Okay, so we definitely have to use some of this pattern paper. This is a different one than this, but they coordinate really nicely. Um, that's a good idea. You could do die cut words and let them add them. Absolutely. All kinds of things you could do. You could even, you know, stamp out a bunch of things onto some ovals or some circles. And then all they have to do is glue it onto the card. You could put the embellishment pieces in there like that. All right. So I'm going to randomly pick some measurements here. I'm going to cut a strip that's two inches two inches by four and three quarters of an inch. Okay. Two inches by four and three quarters of an inch. I just randomly picked that. And then I'm going to use a black panel and I'm going to go two and an eighth of an inch. So I'm just doing an eighth inch bigger by four and seven eighths of an inch. And they should layer fairly well together. Okay. So I'll just tape those together. We're not even putting the paper cutter away because we're going to be cutting all kinds of things here. Okay. Yeah, I promise I'll put all this stuff up for you. So this is going to go down the side of my card. Just simple, right? And it'll look so pretty with the box. All right. So I think I will do... I'm going to try to mix it up a little bit so all the cards aren't exactly the same. You could add this pattern in there. It's not going to look bad because the greens all match perfectly. And this just gives them some other colors to work with. So let's do that same thing again. Like once you come up with some measurements that you like, just go ahead and write them down. And you can do them over and over again. So this is the same thing, two by four and three quarters. And then I'm gonna go two and an eighth. Can I, can I, oh, that is two and an eighth, yay. By four and seven eighths. I don't know why that worked out. I must've had a four inch piece of cardstock there. Sometimes, sometimes God is looking after you, right? And he just, you pick out the right piece of cardstock. <laughs> Oh, he's always looking after you. Okay, so I'm going to tape this one down. I'm making two cards at one time here. I'm going to see if I can get four done. I might be able to. You never know. This is mass producing. And this one is going to do the same thing. It's going to... I have to make sure that the fold is at the top. I've actually done a whole card and, you know, it's been uh, upside down. Please tell me somebody else has done that, where you finished your card and then it opened at the top. <laughs> All right. So there we go. Now I've got that on there. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just, and the way I line this up is I just try to make it look even on all three edges. Even, even, even. That gives you like a good kind of starting point. Okay. Okay. So there we go, we have those. Now, we're gonna pick some texture to add to this. So we could use this, which is the sweater pattern. That's really pretty. We could also use this burlap pattern. I kinda like the burlap, so let's do the burlap. Oh good, I feel better, I'm not alone. <laughs> okay, so now this one is gonna be three inches by four. No, let's do it three by three and a half three by three and a half. And that's just going to go like right there. I'm going to put some black on it because you know I have to. But this should be three because it's a six by six sheet. So three by three and a half. Okay. Now I need two black panels for this. 
So I'll make those three and an eighth. Should I do it that way or should I do it this way? I'll do it this way. Then I can cut two. So three and an eighth by three and five eighths. Let's see if that works before I cut the second one. Yes, that'll work. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing again, three and five eighths. Remember, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here. I don't even know what these cards are going to look like yet, but I kind of do a similar thing when I'm working with pattern papers. It's a layout that I like, and I'm sure you guys have your favorites too. Well, that one didn't really cut as well as I would have liked it to. So I think what I'm going to do, oh, this is going to be messy, but I am going to cut just a little bit off of here. It's going to stick to my... You know what? Do I want it to stick? Yeah, I do. I don't care. I'll clean it. I just want to cut that little edge off. Okay. I was thinking of putting a piece of copy paper on it. I just needed a little bit more black border on that one. The other one was fine. Okay. Welcome, everyone. It is great to see you. I haven't looked up much. Thank goodness Tom is shouting out the questions. I do think that this box is really close to that size, but all right. So let me just give you an idea of what I'm going to do here. I, I have tons of ovals cut out. Ovals are my thing, and I like to cut a bunch of them when I don't know what to do, so I've got tons of them. So I just reached into my oval drawer. And this is the double stitched oval and the single stitched oval. And my thought is to put it here with a greeting and a few little flowers. So that's what I'm going to do. So the way I'm going to lay this out is I'm going to make an even border on this side, like I have on this side. And I'm going to bring it down about the same amount from the top. And I feel like that's going to look good. <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate the sentiment that I'm doing good flying by the seat of my pants. Because I'll tell you, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't work out. Okay, so that is that. And we're going to do one more over here. And I'm sure you can see where this is going because I have a bunch of the ephemera cut already. Because I like cutting that ephemera as something to do. This is all part of that autumn ephemera. So let me show you what that looks like if you're new. The way the autumn, autumn ephemera comes, it comes in a pack of sheets. You get a lot of sheets. And then there's a die that works with it. And you just line up the die on top and cut them all out in one big roll through. So I cut a couple sheets of those earlier and I've got them stored here in my gum container because I chew a lot of gum. So this is what we're going to use for these cards. All right, so now we're going to add a greeting. I've chosen a couple stamp sets here that I think would work good well. They would work good. They would work well with this layout. And so I thought this one would be a good one. This is Fancy Greetings. So it's got a... Um, a thank you, and it's got a big birthday greeting. So I'll make those two first. So to stamp these, I'm going to get an oval, and I'm going to put a little bit of tape on the back, and I'm going to stick it right down onto my Misty. It's kind of hard to, um, you know, block things off with a magnet, so I just use a little tape because this is going to get taped right onto a black one anyway. I do the sugar-free. These are from the sugar-free double mint gum because I'm diabetic, so I chew uh, gum a lot as my sweet snack, and I do the sugar-free, obviously, for both my, my teeth and <laughs> my diabetes. Okay, so we're going to do a thank you greeting on here, and we'll do the thank you at the top like this. 
Now, remember, you can also mass produce these if you want to. What I would suggest is using what the leftover, you know, what you cut the oval out of and lay it down on your misty. Then you can just pop the ovals into the same spot over and over again so you can stamp the same greeting over and over again in the same place. Okay, so we will do the thank you. It's not perfectly centered, but it's better than horrible. I showed my trash can on our Facebook group right before I went live. And I said, this trash can is filled with projects that were not better than horrible. And somebody said, so that's why all the ladies in this group always say better than horrible. <laughs> we have to remember ladies that sometimes, and gentlemen, that sometimes we have new friends, right? <laughs> we have our little things that we do, but we gotta get them included. All right, so now I am, that Chucky tool, we are working on it. It's taking forever to get it done. So I'm sorry for the delay on that. I don't have any estimated time on that right now. Okay, so I'm what? gonna pop that on there. Do you know what stamp set that's from? The yes, this is from the Fancy Greetings stamp set. And then I'm gonna pop that right into the center of this panel right here and just have it extend down a little bit. Okay, so that's gonna just extend down a little, not a lot, because I'm gonna put some flowers down there. And then I'm gonna pick this flower. You can also put it off to the side. I think I'll put it right here, like that. And then I'm gonna add a little leaf element. That's it, just two little pieces like that, just to finish it off. Because these, you know, we wanna make sure that we're not using a ton of stuff and we want it to be fast. We're mass producing here. So I'm gonna just stick that right on there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of this underneath, just like that. There we go. So there's our first card that's gonna go into this box. And even though it's got some pinks on it, doesn't matter. It'll still coordinate really nicely because it's got all that craft. Okay, so let's do the next one. Now this one will be a birthday card and this one is gonna be some blues. So we wanna pop this into place and we're gonna use the birthday wishes to you greeting. See how we're doing. Oh, we have time. We have time. Okay. No, no hurrying here. Birthday wishes to you. And then maybe we'll do like two that are a little bit more masculine feeling. Not that men don't like flowers because I see men doing gardening and they take such pride in their gardens and they love flowers. So I don't know why that's become just a girly thing. It really isn't. Flowers are from nature. They're all beautiful. And you know what? I love leaves. So <laughs> you can love all of that stuff. Flowers are genderless, really. Okay, so let's get another oval on here. Now, if you really want to mix up these cards, you can swap out ovals for circles. You can do squares. You can do rectangles. You can do, you know, labels, whatever, whatever you want to do to mix up the idea. I'm just giving you the basics here. So we'll stick this one on here. I love the patterns. I love using those papers. You gotta use the papers sometimes. You just can't look at them forever. And then this one needs that purple flower. So we definitely are gonna do that. And we could, I feel like that's gonna need something like up there. And then we'll do another one of these down here. 
like that. That'll look nice, right? We do have other sets like this. Um, we have one called Hearty Greetings that has a miss you, love you with all my heart, you are my happy place. We have um, Grateful Greenery, Thankful, Grateful, Blessed, a big thank you. We have Make a Wish that has You're the Sweetest and Make a Wish. So there are lots of different, um, very similar types of stamps with different greetings in our collection. If you type in, like if you're shopping around, type in greetings and they'll all come up. And a lot of them are in our mini stamp sets too. These are all our minis. So they're a little bit more affordable. Get this last one in there. There we go. So that kind of fills in that la that little area there. So now we have two cards made for our box. And this one, boy, that's like, that's spot on, right? Okay. Tags are a great idea. You could add some tags in here instead or with the cards. All right, so let's make, we have a little time. So I think we can at least get one or two more out of this. So I'm going to do the craft again. I don't use enough craft and I think it's just very pretty. It's very warm and cozy for the winter. All of our friends in Arizona and Florida are going, we don't want warm and cozy. <laughs> use blue. We want it to be cool. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to score these quickly. I'm just making them all very similar so it's a more cohesive look. But we definitely can do one that has a little bit more of a masculine feel. You know, and the other thing too, there's pumpkins and gourds and stuff in here. It's okay to use a pumpkin outside of a, you know, a Thanksgiving card. I mean, there's no reason why you can't put a pumpkin. Pumpkins are fruit. They're not dedicated just to, you know, it's just like poinsettias. You can use poinsettias for winter cards. It doesn't have to be just for Christmas. Okay, so let's get back into our pile of things. All right, so this one doesn't have any flowers on it. So let's just grab this one here and we'll do a two by four and a half is what I did before, I think. And we can do two and a quarter. That's already two and a quarter by four and five eighths. I'm not sure if that's what I did before, but we'll see if it works. I think I might have gone a little bigger than that. I think I did, but we'll make this work. I think that'll work. It'll be tucked in a little bit more. And then we can do this one a little bit smaller. We've got some leftover pieces here. Let's use it. So this leftover piece measures two and a half by three and a half. So I'll grab a piece of black cardstock and we'll make this two and five eighths by three and five eighths. Whoa, two and a half by, what did I say? Oh, three. <laughs> Oops. Three and an eighth. All I'm doing is whatever size the square is, I'm going one eighth of an inch up on both sides, whether it's a square, it's a rectangle. Okay, so we can do that for this one. It'll work. We're using scraps now. So let's get this one together. Use a bunch of scraps here. This one I definitely could have cut better. I might just trim this. Here we go. This is where I screw it up. Just gonna trim a tiny bit off there. I feel good about that. That that right here makes all the difference. Okay. <laughs> and we'll get that in there. I did not cut the side of this very well. I'm going to just trim that off. Sometimes if you don't hold the plastic down on the paper cutter, 
The big ones, same way, this part down, if you don't have it tight enough, grip on it, you get a little shreddy. All right, so this is coming in just a little bit. There we go. This might, we might only get three cards out of this, but I still wanna show you how they look when you put them all in the box. Okay. So this is gonna go right like that. I could do it this way. Maybe I'll do it this way. I'll do it that way. So we have just a little wider border. And that was my bad. I didn't make the border the same, but again, it just shows you that you can use up your scraps and still make really nice cards. So, ooh, I have a circle here. I wonder if that would work. Maybe I'll do a circle one. Let's see, what greeting could I use for this? So I need a smaller greeting. Um, here's a cute greeting. This one is, I've been thinking about you. I think I'm going to use that because this is that more generic card I was talking about where maybe somebody is going through some struggles or maybe you just want to reach out and say hello. There's no reason why you can't say I've been thinking about you for any of those things. This is from the set called Doodle Sayings. This has smaller set, smaller stamps. Happy for you. It's your birthday. I've been thinking about you. Hello, friend. How exciting. Um, and I think it's good to have a variety of sizes for these kinds of cards because then you can mix the smaller shapes in with the bigger shapes. Okay. Got something on there, but I'm going to hope for the best. I hope that I, this covers it. Okay. What do you think? Word of the day? Can we sneak in a word of the day? Oh, please. Let's do a word of the day. <laughs> okay. Word of the day. Uh oh, I'm right on your jazz ear. What? I'm right on your. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, so there's a reason why you're making the cards and I'm not because so many of the cards I've tried to make on my own are not better than horrible. In fact, <laughs> the word of the day that describes some of those is the word drab. You make drab cards? <laughs> Just drab. <laughs> I think that's a funny word, drab. And it's uh, kind of versatile, too, if you want to play with um, endings for it. For instance, um, drabismal. <laughs> Some of the cards I've made are been, have been drab, drabismal. <laughs> and... Um, Let's see, what else do we have here? Um, Drabsent. If you know you're going to a lecture and you're not gonna make it through it awake, that would be a, you, you, you probably leave, right? Yes. And then you'd be Drabsent. Drabsent? Drabsent. <laughs> yes, you'd be Drabsent. It's been a long time since I really worked out, so I'm working on my drabs. <laughs> Good words of the day. <laughs> Doing a drab workout. <laughs> drab, the word of the day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I'm going to use a little foam tape for this. I'm going to go back in the dead space. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I'm using some pumpkins for this one because I want it to be a little bit more masculine. I know we talked about the flowers, but I think I'm going to do this. And I like the color of the pumpkin here. So I'm going to put this kind of in the middle. And then I'm going to place the pumpkin right on there. And I might have to pop this second pumpkin up. So I like that these pumpkins are... are you know, blue and purpley, and they're just not all traditional colors. 
So I'll get a couple leaves under there because those are the leaves that are in this pattern paper. And then I'm gonna slip this little thing, this little vine, or it's not really a vine. It's a branch of some sort, like up here, so it kind of wraps up. And then this is just gonna go in front of it. So I have a little piece of foam tape and I'm gonna put this down near the bottom. This way I can pop that up and that foam tape brings it up to the same height. All right, here we go. So there is another quick little card. All right, well, I don't think I have time to make the next card because I do wanna show you how all this looks together when you put it in the box. So I just went into our, um, our inventory and I found these skeleton leaves envelopes, which I think look really good with the leaf pattern here, don't you think? That color looks really nice with these yellow leaves. But if you don't wanna go that drastic where it's a completely different color, um, then you can just stick with plain white and white will work. So let's just do the white because I know I'm gonna use white envelopes like crazy. So I'll just get four envelopes here and I'm gonna steal one card from my stash just to show you that it all fits. So here's one that, does not match at all, but it was a five minute card that I did. And so I wanna show you, you can get all of these cards together. This one has quite a bit of embellishments. You see the difference? How wide that makes that card because of the embellishments on there, these little things. So if you don't have embellishments, you can get a lot more cards in there. And then the envelopes, and we'll just slip them all in here. There we go. They're all in there. And you can box that up. And then if you wanted to use one of those greetings like we talked about, you could do a little decorative thing. You could also just put a little bit of ribbon around there or a little twine. Here's a little bit of twine that I have. I'll just cut this and, you know, we can do just a cute little, little bit of twine around here. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. We can just make it into, Tom, I need your thumb. <laughs> well, it's not that long. <laughs> That'll have to do it right there. But you can see just putting a little twine on there or, you know, anything like that. I know it's not that long. <laughs> Far from drab. <laughs> Far from drab. Maybe do like a crisscross kind of thing like this. Do a little cute little tie. I think some people use like a little clip. Oh, I know what they use. They use the Mindy Eggin tweezers. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. So you get it in there and you tweeze it all down like that. Let's see. Those people know what they're doing. I am not one of those people. Better than horrible. I kind of like it with the little gold cording, very delicate gold cording. And then just, just trim that little bit off there. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I like that. Okay. All right. So you can make, <laughs> is Mindy here laughing at me? Um, so you could do something real simple like that and just take that in as a hostess gift, hand it to your hostess and say, I made some handmade cards for you. I'm telling you, the first time she's got a birthday and she didn't have a chance or he didn't have a chance to stop at the grocery store and pick up an ugly $7 card, that person is gonna be so grateful that they have these tucked away in their desk and ready to send. So there you go. 
All right. So you know what? I'm not going to give this away. <laughs> Should I give it away, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> How about if I get, I give the box with the three cards and three envelopes? Wow. I can't, I'm not going to give that other card in there because it just doesn't match with the set and it's really bugging me. So should we give it away? I'll right. give it away. All right. We're going to give it away. We're going to give away this whole set of cards. Um, it was super easy. I mean, think about it. I just started making these at seven o'clock central time. And within an hour, I had this all done. So you know, put a little bit more time into making a couple extra cards and you can whip these up really quickly. All right. So who gets it, Tom? Drum roll, please. Ah, boy, the big lucky winner tonight is Candy Brown. Candy Brown. Congratulations, Candy. Is that like dust coming off my sweater? <laughs> Congratulations. Candy, all you have to do is send your name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com and I will send this box of cards out to you. All right, everybody. Well, this was so much fun. I will just give me a chance because I have to leave here and go home. And then I that's when I usually upload all the description and all of that. So you know, if you go to sleep tonight, tomorrow morning, it'll all be there for you. I'll have the link to the Facebook group exactly where that file is. So when you join the group, you can get that file. Um, let me see. And uh, I'll have a link to our Facebook group so you can join if you want. And I will have all of those extra dimensions that isn't on here. So on here, I, you know, I have the size of the sheet and where to do all the scores and cuts. But I have on a little piece of paper here, the sizes for all the upholstery. So I will put that in the description as well. So you'll have that. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. We will be back on Thursday with another Thursday afternoon, And then I'll be back over the weekend with another five minute card video. In the meantime, stay safe and healthy, especially if you're driving somewhere where there's snow. Stay safe, drive slow. We love you all so very much. And mwah, we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.